Hey coach, welcome uh, to our YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe down below and click up above. Um, that way you'll be notified of everything that kind of comes through. If you're looking to win championships, if you're looking to have a basement, messy basement like this, but a basement like this, go down over and check out teachups.com for coaches who want to get better. It's the resources, it's mentoring. It's the one-stop shop for basketball coaches. Go over and check it out. Have a great day. Hey, welcome back to the classroom. You know, obviously there's a lot of factors that go into having a successful team and having a top-notch program. And one of those factors is often talked about, but largely misunderstood as, as how it can be accomplished. And that is the process of creating buy-in, creating that connection between player and coach so that everybody is on the same page. Fortunately, Kevin Eastman, who is an assistant coach with the Los Angeles Clippers, he has gone and spoken on this very subject at, at various clinics throughout the country. And so I wanna, what I want to do today is go over those five things that Coach Eastman says are necessary for creating buy-in and then adding a little bit of clarification of my own. So the first one of those steps is to thoroughly study the game. Look, your players aren't going to buy into the program until they buy into you. So it is really important that each and every player on your roster be totally convinced that you understand the game inside and out. The best way to do that, read books, attend other coaches' practices, watch videos, attend clinics. Uh, one of the very best ways is to find the information on hoopskills.com or better yet, basketballclassroom.com. Both of those websites are loaded with resources that'll help increase your overall basketball IQ and give you a, a much deeper knowledge of the game. The second step is to thoroughly study your own system. I know we all want to make our players the best overall player they can be. And the best place to start is within our own system, on our own team. You need to know your system inside and out. Where do the shots come from? What skill sets do you need to be successful at every position? Once you know that, now you can go about teaching your players the skills that they need to first be successful on your team. And then once they can do that, now you can branch out and help them improve their overall game. And players love coaches who are gonna help them get better, who help them be successful. The third step is to catch players doing something right. The biggest and best motivational secret of our time is simply what is recognized and rewarded gets done. If you want something done, then catch your players doing something right and then recognize it and then compliment them on it. Players will crawl over broken glass. They'll walk over hot coals for a sincere compliment, for the respect and appreciation of their coach. Make it a habit to catch every player you coach doing something right every day and recognize it and reward it. The fourth step is to bring it every day. Do you want a team that is full of high intensity, positive, hardworking, enthusiastic players? Then you need to be the exact same way because we all know that players are going to reflect their coaches. If your players think that you're just going through the motions, that you don't really care on becoming the best that you're capable of being, then their attitude is going to reflect yours. Before you can get certain qualities out of your players, you have to give it to them first, and you have to give it to them each and every day that you're together. The last step, always tell the players the truth. Your motto needs to be all truth all the time. Um, Players may not like it and appreciate it first because some of them have been lied to their whole lives. Uh, other coaches, parents, family, friends have all 
told them how great they are, have all told them that they don't really need to work on their game, haven't really pointed out their weaknesses to them. You need to tell them the truth and point them in the right direction. Some won't like it, but those that do and appreciate it and respect you for it and then take your words to heart and start working on making those improvements, those are the players that are going to get better. And those are the players that have a chance to be something special. This is especially important when it comes to playing time. Don't tell a kid that the reason you're not playing is because you don't handle the ball well enough. Because what happens if he goes out and works on ball handling and becomes really, really proficient at handling the ball? Does he get to play? Maybe not. Maybe there comes a time where you're just going to have to tell players, look, right now you're not good enough. You have to improve your overall game without being extremely specific. Uh, creating buy-in, it's not created overnight. Um, it's, it happens day by day, meeting by meeting, workout by workout. Sometimes it's a long and, and, and time-intensive process, but those coaches that are willing to do whatever it takes and are willing to follow Coach Eastman's five steps uh, will find that it's more than worth it. Hey coach, so glad you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed it a lot. Actually, if you did, subscribe and like, and then go over and check out teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better.